Professor Martin Luther, who launched the Protestant Reformation, said almost 500 years ago, if I profess with the loudest voice every truth of God, except precisely that point which at the moment the world and the devil is attacking, then I'm not confessing Christ, however boldly I may be professing him. Where the battle rages, there the loyalty of the soldier is proved, and to be steady on all the battlefront besides is mere flight and disgrace if he flinches at that point. And it is a sad fact that today freedom of speech, freedom of thought, freedom of association is under attack. Freedom of conscience is under attack. People have been bullied. And this issue of people's personal sexual preferences is being used like a huge stick to hit people with. The Lubyanka, which used to be a monastery, was taken over by the KGB and turned into KGB headquarters. And when a person heard Lubyanka, their blood ran cold. When they were told you've been called to the Lubyanka, that's KGB headquarters, secret police headquarters. People were afraid. In fact, many were interrogated, tortured, imprisoned, lost their lives, were murdered even. And today we've got character assassination. We have got prosecutions bullying and intimidation by the KGB. We also alluded to the Inquisition, calling them the Pink Inquisition. In, in the Middle Ages, to silence somebody, all you had to say was heretic or traitor, treason. Today, we have a situation where people are, if they don't like what you say, they're screaming hate speech, homophobic bigots, uh, and so on. So uh, now, what you're seeing is this is similar to calling a person in the Middle Ages a heretic or a traitor or in the Soviet Union saying that you're a reactionary or counter-revolutionary and that this now is being used to silence free speech, to suppress freedom of conscience, freedom of thought, freedom of association, freedom of the press uh, and it seems very pervasive. So I think the KGB and the Inquisition are fair analogies as, as a shock tactic to alert one to the fact What's happening to freedom of speech that we're going this way? So, But amongst the 2% that would be homosexuals are a very dedicated core, even smaller in number, but, but they've been able to affect the Constitution more effectively than 70% of the population who claim to be Christians have put Christian views into the Constitution. They managed to write in, even though they were a minuscule percentage of the population, they were so well placed that they got the African National Congress to de facto accept the homosexual agenda, even though the vast majority of ANC members would never accept these things if it was put to a referendum or they were asked. So this is a case of a foreign European communist humanist agenda being infiltrated and strategically positioned to hijack the country so that without the people being consulted. So how did they manage to do it here in South Africa? Not democratically, not openly, not transparently, but through subterfuge and intrigue and uh, through infiltration. So the, the precedent is terrible because we know that you cannot have a society of multi-ethnic, multi-religious, multi-cultural situation where we're all going to be picking on one another because you don't specifically fully agree with me on every point. There's got to be a certain amount of tolerance. There's got to be a love. Do to others what you want them to do to you, Jesus said. So we think this is extremely dangerous and it sets a horrible precedent for society. This, in fact, can break up the very fabric of society, which needs to be built upon tolerance and respect for different views. It seems to us in many cases that unlike any other sin, homosexuality is positioning itself in a position to bring about persecution of the church in a way that persecution was done in the past, whether by the communists or others, that now homosexuality is possessing the single greatest threat to freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of conscience that we have in our time. As far as we can see, all homosexuals have exactly the same rights everyone else does. They've got the right to life, right to property, due process of the law, innocence or proven guilty, and so on. 
right to vote. Uh, so there's, there's no uh, real discrimination against homosexuals that, that needs to be addressed. What they are after is not, uh, speci uh, not uh, equal rights, but special rights. In fact, as some have put it, privileges for perverts. And you don't get any other sin that campaigns so resolutely for special privileges, uh, such as you don't get the adulterers, the fornicators, uh, the pornographers, the uh, drunkards, uh, the drug addicts, and so on, seeking some special... Uh, because these are, these are lifestyle choices. These are, are not something benign like your gender, your skin color, your eye color. I mean, none of this uh, is... Uh, that's not a choice. Uh, but these things, like sexual preference, are... There's a lot of scientific medical studies that are quoted here that show that it's not in your DNA. You can have twins, for example, who are alike in every way, but one might choose to be a lesbian or homosexual and the other not. And uh, at any rate, we've got many, many thousands of testimonies of people who come out of the homosexual lifestyle, who found freedom in Christ, and who have become married, parents. I've got numerous people who came out of homosexual lifestyle as friends who are married with children, and you, you often just think, extraordinary, the transformation. Do we want to put children, vulnerable children, into the hands of a same-sex couple? What is this doing for the child? And there are people who have been raised by homosexual couples who have come out saying, what about us? Nobody cared about us and all the problems they went through. And, and there's some well-outspoken people. You can Google their testimonies. And not all of them are Christians, but they're frustrated over, you know, you didn't care about what it was doing to us. All the studies show that the family is the basic building block of society. As goes the family, so goes the whole nation. And that children need a male and a female. They need a father and they need a mother figure. And so for us to want to undermine what is good for the child, there is no other indicator on all the studies for a stable and balanced life. And praise God for those courageous single mothers who do a, as good a job as they can against all. But the odds are against them. Uh, the fact is that... A, a stable home with a father and a mother who love one another and who stay married to one another, bring up their children in the love of the Lord is the best single thing you can do for any child or for any society. It's, it's devastating. Uh, in fact, I think all of us are concerned for crime. We're all concerned for a breakup of homes, uh, the amount of children who are going into drugs, the amount of children who are going into uh, excessive drink and uh, gambling and uh, uh, absolute binges of drunkenness, and the amount who are going into every kind of perversion. Uh, there's real problems because a child needs stability while they're going, especially through puberty. Extremely important. Where do we want them to learn about sex from? Pornography? From these sex ed campaigns in the schools, which in many cases are teaching you how to be a whoremongering, fornicating pervert, and teaching you the mechanics of how to be a whoremongering, fornicating pervert, and they call this life skills. And bluntly, if somebody thinks I've overstayed the case, you haven't been paying attention to what your child's been taught at the schools, they are teaching in our government schools under sex education and life skills, they're teaching you how to be a whoremongering, fornicating pervert. And it's shocking. It's child abuse. And It bodes ill for us. We have to be very careful in our use of words. We've got to be objective. Uh, we've got to, without emotion and without inflammatory language, uh, say things. Keep, and not that that would necessarily keep us out of trouble. We'd probably still get some legal trouble. But it, you've got to be able to defend your position in court these days, even, and in the courts of public opinion through the media, that what you're saying is balanced, biblical, factual, fair, well-researched, even-handed. Uh, it's, it shouldn't be that we, we are so afraid to express our opinions, and more importantly, what the clear teaching of Scripture is, but I'm afraid we do have to be. There are many who would be delighted to get you as a Christian journalist, or me as a missionary, or someone else listening to this who's a Christian pastor, or Sunday school teacher, or school teacher, into trouble for having said something intemperate 
or unbalanced, which they could construe as homophobic hate speech. So obviously we must be very careful.